Okay, so in this video we want to um, review our index laws. So a um, couple of just sort of basic things about indices and powers. Um, a power is the product of a certain number of factors. So for example, 5 cubed is the product of 3 fives. So 5 cubed is equal to, sorry that breaks over the line, 5 times 5 times 5. So in terms of terminology, when we have um, a power, technically the whole thing is the power, a to the power of something, is the whole thing is called a power. The A is the base, I'm sorry, the base of the power. Um, and the N is the index or the exponent. Okay, hence exponential of exponential function, the unknown in the exponent. Um, all right, so the other thing we need to be mindful of, and we touched a little bit on this as it came up in the last video, um, that when working with expressions involving indices, we must understand the order of operations and where, or, where indices and powers and um, exponents fit within that order. And it's right here, straight after the brackets. They're the first thing you do after any brackets. They come before division and multiplication. So that's what means that negative x all squared is not the same as negative x squared because this left-hand one means negative 1 times x squared. You square the x before you multiply it by negative 1, whereas the second version means you multiply x by negative 1 and then you square it, okay? Which means, for example, if you were substituting, you know, if you were doing, uh, let's say, negative 3 squared, that's negative 9, okay? Negative 3 all squared is positive 9. Okay, so being clear about the difference there. Um, and a few other things. So things like 2 times 3 to the power of x is not 6 to the power of x. The multiplication doesn't override the power. You do 3 to the power of x first, and then you multiply that by 3. It's not, doesn't equal 2 times 3 to the x. You change the order of operations there. Okay, so it's really important that you understand that. A lot of this, the mistakes people make with index laws is, is really just not properly understanding how they fit into the order of operations, your basic primary school maths. Okay, and there's your indices or order right there. It's really misleading that a number of primary school teachers teach bod mass as being brackets of, and they don't refer to the O. Um, that's powers. Um, and the O, if you use bod mass, stands for order. Um, sometimes if we write, you know, 2 cubed, we can write that as, we can say 2 to the power of 3, we can say 2 to the order of 3. Um, so that's a sort of older uh, phrase. So um, more recently, um, schools, primary schools teach, tend to teach bid mass, um, or certainly 7 and 8 tend to teach bid mass, brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition and subtraction. Okay, let's review the index laws. Um, that we should be pretty familiar with by now. Um, certainly, you know, we cover them extensively in um, year 9 and 10, um, and I'm sure the simpler ones you've met prior to that as well. So a to the power of m times a to the power of n. If we're multiplying two powers with the same base, we can combine them together by adding the powers. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go into proofs of this. Again, this really should be a revision. You should have seen these a lot. So for example, if we have um, x cubed times x to the power of 4, that can be written as x to the power of 3 plus 4, so x to the power of 7. If we're dividing two powers with the same base, they must have the same base, we can combine them together by subtracting the exponents. So a to the power of m minus n. So for example, if we had um, x to the power of 6 divided by x to the power of 2, that is going to be x to the power of 6 minus 2, and so x to the power of 4. Note that that would also hold, obviously, another example might be if you had x squared over x to the power of 6, that is x to the power of 2 minus 6, which is x to the power of negative 4. Okay, so we can have negative indices, we'll review those further down the table. Um, if we apply one power after another, um, we just did that at the end of the last video in solving that exponential equation. So a to the power of m and then to the power of n, we multiply those powers, a to the power of m times n. So for example, if we had x cubed and then we were squaring that, that would be x, actually I won't use square because that's the same as adding, let's make that to the power of 4, that would be x to the power of 3 times 4, which would be x to the power of 12. 
And that's because you're doing x cubed times x cubed times x cubed times x cubed. So you can think about you need to add together those powers four times, which is how which is the same as doing um, four, sorry, three multiplied by four. Um, okay, if we have two things multiplying together all to a power, um, we can simply expand that out. So a to the power of n times b to the power of n. So for example, something as simple as 2x squared all cubed would be 2 cubed times x squared cubed. So it would be 8x to the 6. Okay. If we're dividing um, two things all to a power, we can also break that up if we want. And these work in reverse as well, obviously. So and sometimes it's helpful to, to write them in the reverse. So if you had x squared on y squared, that's x on y all squared, for example. Um, so in this instance, we might think about if we had you know x squared on um, 3 all squared, that's going to be x squared squared over 3 squared, and so it's x to the power of 4 over 9. a to the power of 0, anything to the power of 0 is 1. Um, again, I'm not going to go into the proofs for these. You really should have seen these a lot. Let's be clear about, though, again, thinking about our order of operations. So, for example, if we had 3x to the 0, that equals 3 because that's 3 times x to the 0. The power of 0 is not being applied to the 3. So it's 3 times 1, and so it's 3. As opposed to if you had 3x all to the power of 0, the whole thing's the power of 0, and it's 1. Right, negative powers. a to the power of negative n. The negative is nothing to do with making the term negative. The negative in the power is simply about um, saying, I'm on the wrong side of the denominator or numerator. I'm on the wrong side of the fraction. If we go back up here to this example I gave you up here, actually, let's go back up here to this one. x squared over x to the power of 6. If we use our index law, it turned out to be x to the power of 4. Sorry, negative 4. If we also think about what x squared over x to the power of 6 means, it means x times x over x times x times x times x times x times one more, x, yep. So dividing top and bottom by x, dividing top and bottom by x again, we get 1 on x to the power of 4. So x to the negative 4 is the same as 1 on x to the power of 4. The negative just tells you I'm on the wrong side of the fraction. I should be x to the power of 4 on the denominator rather than x to the power of negative 4 on the numerator. Okay? So a to the power of negative n is 1 over, I'm, I should be a to the power of n on the denominator of the fraction. Okay? So for example, and again, let's make this, let's say if we've got 2x to the negative 3. Again, let's be clear, that's 2 times x to the negative 3. The negative power is not being applied to the 2. So that's 2 times 1 on x cubed, which is 2 on x cubed. So the 2 stays on the top, the x cubed needs to go to the bottom. Okay? As opposed to if it was 2x to the negative 3, then that would be 1 over 2x all cubed. So 1 over 2 cubed is 8x cubed. Okay? So be clear about the difference there. Um, 1 over a to the negative n, it's the same idea. The negative power says, hey, I should be a to the power of n on the other side of the fraction. So I shouldn't be on the denominator. I should actually be on the numerator. All right. And then, again, similarly, we could break this up. Um, you could think about this in a couple of different ways. You could think about this as being a to the negative n over b to the negative n. So a to the negative n says, hey, I'm actually a to the n and I should be on the denominator. b to the negative n says, hey, I'm actually b to the n and I should be on the numerator, which means that this is the same as b on a all to the power of n. So you can take the reciprocal. The negative also means you can take the reciprocal of the base. You can think about it that way as well. Um, sorry, I didn't put in an example for the previous one. All right, so let's just say something as simple as um, if we had 3 on x to the negative 4, the 3 doesn't go anywhere, 3 is still up the top, but the x to the 4 comes up to join it. Okay. Um, here, for example, if we had 3 quarters to the negative 2, that's 4 thirds to the positive 2, which is 4 squared over 3 squared, Sorry, which is using uh, this rule up here, Okay. Um, and that is 16 over 9. 
Okay, so index laws for both positive and negative indices should be pretty familiar. Let's again remember that if you're adding um, or subtracting indices with the same base, can't do anything with them, that's just x cubed plus x squared. If you have addition or subtraction in the bracket, you don't do, it's not x squared plus 2 squared, you expand it out, it's x squared plus 4x plus 4, okay, perfect square. It's not just, you don't just write a to the n plus b to the n. Um, if you're multiplying things with different bases, so if you have x squared times y cubed, you can't combine those together at all. They just become x squared y cubed, but they don't. you don't add powers if the bases are different. Same if you're dividing. Okay, let's just work on some problems. So simplify each of the following. So x cubed and then to the power of n plus 1. So we know we multiply powers in this situation. So this becomes x to the power of 3 times n plus 1. So x to the power of 3n plus 3. Okay, part B, we need to be really careful with these um, improper fractions, sorry, uh, mixed numbers. Um, they're really not helpful. So one and a half, the first thing I'm gonna do is write that as three on two, to the power of negative three. Right, then I've got a negative power. So this is the same as two thirds to the power of positive three. Take the reciprocal of the base because of the negative power. And now this is two cubed on three cubed, which is eight on 27. Okay, part C um, is similar to the um, example I gave you above. So 3x to the 0, that's 3 times x to the 0, minus 3x to the power of 0. So it's 3 times 1 minus 1. So 3 minus 1, and so 2. Okay, in the next one, we want to think about the x plus 1 as being the base. Okay, so you've got x plus 1 all cubed over x plus 1 all to the power of 1. So that's going to be x plus 1 to the power of 3 minus 1. Um, I skipped over, we've also got 5 over 10 at the front, so that's going to be 1 half. So we've got 1 half times x plus 1 to the 2. If you want, you can write that as x plus 1 squared over 2. They're the same thing, okay? doesn't matter how you write that. All right, simplifying each of the following here in question 2. Sorry. Um, all right, so using our index laws in combination, so you sort of want to develop a bit of a systematic approach here and, and develop a process whereby you do the same thing each time. So I'm first of all going to expand out the brackets. So that would mean I get x to the power of 4 times y to the power of 8. We multiply those powers in that instance. And then that's times x cubed y. So don't forget, this is all multiplication. It doesn't matter what order you do those things in. So let's do the x to the 4 times x cubed. So that's going to be x to the power of 7, adding the powers. And y to the 8 times y, which is y to the 1, adding those powers gives us y to the power of 9. Okay, b, again, let's focus on expanding out the bracket on the numerator. So we're going to have m to the power of 6, 3 times 2, n to the power of negative 10, over m to the 6, n to the negative 1. Do not worry about the negative powers until the end. Simplify your answer as much as you can. If you have a negative power at the end, then you can worry about writing it as a positive power. Okay, subtracting powers. So we're going to have m to the power of 6 minus 6, that's m to the 0, n to the power of, now careful with negative subtractions, negative 10 minus minus 1, that's negative 10 plus 1, so that's negative 9. So m to the 0 is just 1, n to the negative 9 is 1 on n to the 9, so we've just got 1 over n to the power of 9. There'd be nothing wrong with writing your answer as n, sorry, n to the negative 9. Often though the question will say simplify expressing your answer with positive powers, okay, in which case then you'd have to write 1 on n to the 9, but there's nothing wrong in this format of the question as it's asked here to leave your answer as n to the power of negative 9. Okay, sorry, keep bringing up that keypad today. All right, simplifying this. Again, it's just about taking your time. Don't do too much at once. Please try not to do cancelling where you cross things out. You end up with something that looks like this and you've got no idea what you've got left, okay? Really just take it one step at a time. Let's focus on the numerator first. So expanding out the brackets. A to the negative eight, B to the negative four. Then we've got that times A, B cubed, C over a, B, C to the 5. So it brackets first. Then I'm going to focus on multiplying together. Then I'm going to focus on dividing. Okay. So on the numerator, again, we've got all these things being multiplied together. 
the order that we do those multiplications doesn't matter. So we're going to have a to the negative 8 multiplied by a to the 1. So negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. We've got b to the negative 4 multiplied by b cubed. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And we've just got the c to the power of 1. Over on the bottom, bottom we've got a to the 1, b to the 1, c to the 5. So now let's do those subtractions. a to the negative 7 divided by a to the 1. Negative 7 minus 1 is negative 8. b to the negative 1 minus... Uh, is divided by b to the 1, so subtracting the powers, negative 1 minus 1 is b to the negative 2. And c to the 1 divided by c to the 5, 1 minus 5 is c to the negative 4. Now in this instance, you'll see that it says explicitly, expressing your answer with positive indices. So we want to make sure that our answer at the end is positive. So this, these are all going to go into the denominator of the fraction. We're going to have a to the 8, b to the 2, and c to the 4 in the denominator. So 1 over. Okay, number four, simplify each of the following. Okay, so in the first example, um, we're multiplying things, but they don't have the same base. However, I know that eight and 16 are both powers of two. So I wanna first of all focus on writing them with the same base so that then I can use my index laws. So this is already got a base of two. 16 is two to the power of four. And eight is two to the power of three. Okay, so we've got 2 to the x multiplied by, we multiply the powers here, so that's 2 to the 16x. And again, we multiply the powers here, so that's 2 to the 9x. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay, and then now we've got the same base. We're multiplying, so we can add those powers. So this is 2 to the power of x plus 16x plus 9x. And so that is 2 to the power of, what's that going to be, 17, 26x. Okay, part B, again, we've got different bases here, so we can't use our index laws much with the different bases, although we could do some focus on combining the 3s and combining the 9s, but I think I'm first of all going to worry about just writing everything with a base of 3, and then I can focus on my index laws. So we've got 3 to the power of 2n minus 1 multiplied by, now that's 3 squared to the n minus 1, all over 3 squared multiplied by, this is 3 squared to the n plus 2. Okay, so here we multiply those powers together. So we're going to get 3 to the 2n minus 1 multiplied by 3 to the 2n minus 2. Careful, multiply the whole power by 2 over 3 squared multiplied by 3 to the power of 2n plus 4. Now again, we could do some division here, but I'm going to focus first of all on multiplying together and I'll do, do the division last. So on the numerator, we're, going to, we're multiplying two things with a base of 3, so I'm going to add those powers. So that'll be 2n minus 1 plus 2n minus 2 over, and again, I'm going to add on the bottom here, we're going to have 2 plus 2n plus 4. All right, let's just tidy those up, and you can certainly do that all in the one step. I'm just being clear about what I'm doing here. So we're going to have 2n plus 2n, so that's 4n uh, minus 1 minus 2, 4n minus 3 on the numerator is the power, and 3 to the power of 2n plus 6. All right, so then we subtract powers. Now be careful here because you're going to have 4n minus 3 take away all of 2n plus 6, which means you're going to have 3 to the power of 4n minus 2n, which is 2n, and negative 3 minus 6, so negative 9. Okay, um, plenty of practice there, but they're nice, quick, easy questions, just putting those um, very, hopefully very familiar index laws um, into practice. Um, so that is the work for you today.